matchup now as we go in. Do we need to have a seven game money match on, a, on stream or can we settle it all here? I mean, this is essentially a, a best of three money match. I'm not going to argue that here. We do see one Ralt in the prize cards. Can be a bit unfortunate. See pieces of that line. I'm not complaining if I'm Brandon. We can work with those prize cards. One Colrus, not my favorite, but find him early. It'll be all right. Colrus, a couple of basic searches in that nest ball and Buddy Buddy Poffin. But a super odd for Joshua there. They're going to have to deal with maybe a little bit of resource management, but it is at the bottom. Oh, got a note that we can't read. It's fine. I can't read anyways, so that is true. Yeah. <laughs> just this is just getting confusing for me. Hey, you thought Squabbit was a palm? You know, we got past that, Jeremy. <laughs> now we're gonna jump into the top eight. Joshua starts things off here for us in the top eight. Let's go ahead and take a look down and get things rolling. Already searching through the deck with a nest ball. They have Ralts in the active, a Ralts on the bench, and then a Fluttermane. Fluttermane's going to be, or at least seems like a pretty good card for uh, against this Giratina matchup. What do you think about Fluttermane against the uh, Lost Zone Giratina, Kyle? Well, Jeremy, if you invented a card that would be good <laughs> in a matchup, this would be the one. Fluttermane is phenomenal. You want to shut down that Comfe as soon as you can. And you don't see it now, but it is always a looming threat. To see Comfe uh, hop into the active spot and use that flower selecting can be a real big issue as it starts to load up the Lost Zone, get those cards stored away forever, but ultimately charging up the power of that Giratina V-Star or that Kramer Ant, whatever it may be. Those are threats you don't want to see, and if they don't have the Lost Zone, you're chilling. Technically... I also uh, have another horse in the race with uh, Joshua and their flutter main in the deck. All right, You're that is why I picked. It. I was like, it's also that's in Gardevoir. Why you picked it? Well, ancient box, but you know, it's also in Gardevoir. <laughs> all right, we'll give you a half point there. You are a Gardevoir representative. This is a beautiful art, by the way. Oh yeah, it, uh, all, all the new cards has every set. It, it just gets better and better, honestly. Well, we'll see if the Hex Hurlin ever starts. But even just getting this Pokemon into the active spot can be all you need. Slow down a player like Brandon. We don't see players using escape ropes or anything anymore. It's, it's a Pokemon that's going to be hanging out in the active spot as soon as you find that energy. Yeah, very reminiscent of the Clef Key that we saw some play uh, before rotation. But one key difference is Mischievous Lock negates all basic Pokemon and play abilities, so no Radiant Greninja, things like that. Fluttermane, just the active. Now passing back with the Fluttermane in the active. Brandon does have a Colossus Experiment to start things off, so that's step number one. Oh, this would be so good if Fluttermane wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> but this is uh, its not exactly the cards you want to see all the course. It's, it's, it's everything that would line up fine, but ultimately... This might be a situation where you just play slow, awkward Pokemon. You've got the Giratina in the active spot. Let's build our own Colrus, shall we? Yeah, I guess. Abyss Seeking here, taking a look at the top four. Going to have to get rid of two cards, and it's seeming like Ultra Ball Switch. Now there's four cards in the Lost Zone. And like you were saying, Brandon's hand was very good. Outside of that, Fluttermane could even clean things up with a Cramorant, but no Escape Rope in the format anymore means it's a lot harder to combat a play like this, Fluttermane. Well, we talk about the differences that the Gardevoir players have faced ever since the change in the rotation. And this is one of those, the technical machine evolution. This is a way that you can now start to evolve into those Curlias. You don't have the Mirage step anymore. And we, uh, we like these Ralts, you know, but we like them even more when they uh, see their true potential and start to refine. Yeah, uh, a little unfortunate that Joshua didn't have a Curlia in hand to evolve into and get the full use out of that technical machine evolution, but still grabbing two Curlia, get them in play. It's kind of like a Mirage Step, right? It, yeah, I mean, this is ideally a, a better one. This is a Mirage Step that you don't care about if it gets knocked out and it stops Comfe from using its ability. <laughs> it's a win-win. Nest ball for Brandon here. 
going to try to fill out this bench a little more. Maybe another Giratina V, maybe that Radiant Greninja. Again, it can use its ability on the bench, so might as well try to get as many cards in your hand as possible before these Iono start coming down. Yep. Well spotted by Joshua to play down that Manaphy and avoid any shenanigans. This would be a scary turn to potentially run into the Moonlight Shuriken, although it is pretty difficult when you're only staring at Colrus experiments as your way to get cards into the Lost Zone. Fluttermane pulling its weight. All right, now that we're taking a look at the list for Brandon, you were talking about we haven't found that perfect Giratina list just yet in this meta. How's this stacking up? You got a one of Thornton, two Roxanne, one Temple of Sinnoh. I mean, these are all cards that were either featured at one point in time or were the 61st card of a lot of deck lists because Thornton is unbelievable when, when it's able to work out, when you can sneak this into play, when you can randomly present your opponent with the threat of a Giratina V-Star when you only had single prize Pokemon in play, when you can replay a Pokemon post Super Rod and come out of nowhere, that's unbelievable. And this is the only way that you can move around and use flower selecting, get that seventh card into the loss zone, potentially that prime catcher, which we did not have earlier. Yeah, it is a very good card to get around the Flutter main, but it's also just a very powerful card in general. And having to use it so early you're going to really have to maximize these flower selectings from your Comfey. And having to get rid of a Manaphy could also be detrimental because there is a way for Joshua to get an attack on the bench, and that's with that Scream Tail. Just so you can get a Band-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do not see a Colrus Experiment this time around. The one being in the prize cards looks like it is going to be a bit of an issue. Five cards in the Lost Zone means Cramorant's ready to roll. Lost Provisions easily take the knockout on that Curly. I think we're revisiting if uh, the Radiant Greninja's ability was used this turn. Brandon believes that he was able to, to, to use that, and maybe we just didn't flip over the, uh, the signifier there with that coin. Yeah, well, there is that water energy in the discard. Maybe even... Did Brandon switch card before playing down the Cramorant? That don't make the rules. Right. Let's go ahead and talk about some of our other top eight players. Fabrizio, starting off with that 1-0 lead in the top eight. Not bad, not bad. Fabrizio is up against like Charizard, so. Just... Okay. On paper, good matchup, what you want to see. Which Charizard do we see? It's Oh, it's Liam. World, World champion, champion caliber. Sounds good. Again, we're just at a little bit of some checking up to see, make sure everything's copacetic for the turn. Yep. I mean, this is a this is a win more situation here for Brandon. Obviously, if he's able to draw into a Culver's experiment here, it's going to be off to an unbelievable start, taking the knockout onto Curlia, and having those opportunities. Oh, or is this just a sleeve thing? Oh, no, I think uh, oh. there was a cut on the hand. We're bleeding? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really a lost opportunity. This, this game's gotten out of control. The, oh, that's the a first color. The first opponent is the packaging. <laughs> I, this, this is not something I was ready for in the top eight. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. Oh, yeah, there's a little Down bit of dirty right Pokemon there. action. Bleeding for this win. That's yep. what I was calling it out. I was like, maybe I don't want blood. <laughs> well, that's one way to get your opponent to avoid cutting the deck. <laughs> it's just bleed all over them. I think he's just fitted. In now that everything is nice and ready, we get the knockout on the Curlia that was brought active with that Prime Catcher thanks to that Spit Innocently from Cramorant. That is a first <laughs> in eight years of commentary. Never seen anything like that just yet. Yeah, we got to check those sleeves. Uh, maybe that's why uh, they check them at TSA because they can... There's some definitely sharp edges. a sponsorship opportunity here for Brandon. <laughs> we'll have to look into that. In the meantime, Iono being played and this... This is what I talk about with Gardevoir. I don't, I'm not feeling it yet. 
This is not what Gardevoir used to look like. I'm used to drawing 15 cards, having a party, recycling all these great attack or these these great uh, refinements and draws, and just over and over again, just having the ability to see so many cards. It just doesn't feel like that anymore. Oh, I don't know. We're drawing a couple more cards. The first refinement for Joshua found a Curlia and Radiant Greninja. We're back. There's another. <laughs> there's another energy in hand. Concealed cards finds Earthen Vessel. Already played a support for the turn, but has the Eerie in hand. Has the Gardevoir EX, so you can actually evolve the Gardevoir and charge up the Flutter main, deal 90, spread some 20 damage, still keep that ability active. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be an early situation. I feel like a lot of time we see players slowing down with the Gardevoir, but already with three Psychic Energies in the discard pile, there is an opportunity. The hand is at a point where it looks stable enough to play down the Gardevoir, remove the refinement from play, but then give yourself that great ability of Psychic Embrace to start attacking, and Fluttermane is going to get aggressive. Especially, they sense a little bit of weakness by no courses experiment on Brandon's side of the board last turn, and it's going to be a lot harder to get to that seven for Mirage Gate to be able to cobble together a knockout that's not Cramorant, and Cramorant cannot attack against Fluttermane. But, oh, we're going to have a counter catcher here. Bring up Giratina V, 90, and then spread 20 to the Cramorant. That's going to put a lot of pressure on this Giratina. Yeah, this lines up very well. You have a strong read on the hand. There's not much going on. It has to be Radiant Greninja drawing out into a Colrus. We only know there's two in the deck right now, and that's that not, not it. That's not a hand. <laughs> This Flutter main is going crazy. Attaches an energy for turn to the Comfey, and then Abyss Seeking, so he's going to be able to hit to the seven, but not the way you want. Whoa. Is that double Poke Gear? Double Poke Gear, Bosses, Hoarders, and Counter Catcher. You know that you're going to be losing in spots like this, so sure. Make use of the Counter Catcher at some point. And this just feels like a a really difficult spot to come back from. Tons of damage is going to be placed. Joshua doesn't have to take prize cards just yet either. Yeah, they were asking how many cards in hand, and I think we might be having an e eerie turn here. Try to take out some important items. First is going to find a couple psychic energy with that earthen vessel. Get a few draws with the Radiant Greninja and Curlia. Yep. So important this time around, this build. Use the Radiant Greninja as often as you can. Each turn will also start to load up with the Psychic Energies in the discard pile. Finds the Ace back as well. And there is the Eerie. Taking a look at the hand. Information's great, but you know what's better? Discarding Mirage Gate. Discarding... Hmm, counter catcher, super rod, pokey gear. Oh, it's I think it's I think pokey gear. That's with the, with the way the hand's been maybe, but counter catcher could try to take care of something like that Gardevoir EX on the bench. Get rid of that. You already know the boss's order is gone. That if that pokey gear finds Colbert's experiment, <laughs> that is a calculated risk from Joshua. They have another play here with the Ultra Ball discarding Psychic Energy and Jirachi, it seems like. Now, again, Jirachi is one of those cards that is pretty good against Sableye in, in these Lost Zone decks. Granted, most of the decks now just play one, but it's still a very looming threat to be mindful of. Not much left at this point. Done a fairly good job of working through the deck. Scream tail. Man, if he's also gone. Now with this Fluttermain attacking the Giratina V, still not going to be able to take the knockout. I'm just going to leave the Giratina with 40. It feels honestly like a, a good strategy at this point. Just continue to put pressure on your opponent, but you can retreat and start to use the Scream tail at later turns, avoid taking those prize cards so that you can use your counter catchers to full effect. 
Seems like we're actually retreating now. Maybe into the Gardevoir EX. I mean, this means all your counter catchers are useless for the rest of the game. It's a, it's, it's, it's a worthy debate to have. And taking a look at the list, there is three copies of counter catcher. We do see the bench of the screen tail before the retreat. We're going to have the psychic embrace put on some damage. 80 damage on the screen tail. That means Roaring Scream is going to be doing 160 to anyone on the field on Brandon's side. Takes the knockout for Giratina V. And we're starting to get things going now. Yeah, you think, obviously, the Jirachi hitting the discard pile starts to open up your eyes to see why. Wow, Colors experiment. That just means discarding the counter catcher was the better play. Well played. You you are it was inevitable. Yeah. Golris was waiting right there. But that's gonna be what, nine in the loss zone now? No. We're we getting close, right? Yeah, it's nine, gonna be ten with the flower selecting. But first we're gonna conceal cards, discard that extra energy in hand, finds the Mirage Gate. Okay. Flower Selecting finds another Colrus' experiment. Has to get rid of a grass. That is Does he have access all to Pokemon Colrus. Search? Yeah, just an opportunity to find the Sableye here. Would be pretty nice to clean up some of these Pokemon. Jet energy onto the Comfey. Promotes into the active. Looking for some help, buddy. buddy. That doesn't well, do it. Maybe Mirage was more important there. <laughs> well, again... But he only gets the, the small Pokemon. Yeah, to he's, the a, bench. he's a little too heavy. Retreat to the Cramorant and is now able to get that free attack off. Spit instantly, taking the knockout on that Scream Tail. But now this is what Joshua predicted. Going to have that 20 damage from the last Fluttermane attack on that Cramorant, meaning this Fluttermane can clean it up and leave Brandon with just Comfey in play. And that doesn't work very well against Fluttermane now, does it? No, it does not, <laughs> Kyle. Yeah, this is uh, going very well so far. Just search out some additional resources, and this would be a great opportunity to find that Ralts, play that Pokemon back down. Yeah, I think they got the Ralts from the prize cards, but is eyeing it down Jirachi off the Super Rod. We could potentially see that Buddy Buddy Poffin being played to go and fetch that. Yeah, I suppose there is, there is a debate now. As the bench space is so important. You have to make use of that, and avoiding the collective damage of the Sableye now is going to take precedent. And then the Screamtail and whichever Pokemon follows forth, that bench space will always just be the niche attacker that you want in that situation, unless you have to get aggressive with the Gardevoir EX. And I think with the way this Gardevoir EX deck has just been built and evolved after rotation, it's able to do that pretty well. We're going to see the first refinement. Plenty of energy in the discard so far. Again, with a version of this deck now, doesn't need that many psychic energy. We're not seeing the full 10 to take a big knockout on like a 300 HP Pokemon. Right. Cramorant's used to spitting innocently, but it's going to get hex hurled into the discard as Joshua goes down to three prizes left against Brandon's four, and the field is not looking that good. Yep, three is the magic number when you want to move into that Roxanne territory, and that's when you start to think about does Gardevoir have the opportunity to draw out of situations like this? You've played a ton of Psychic Energies. Makes Radiant Greninja less impactful. You only have that one Curlia refinement. And weren't able to work on a second one on the bench. And maybe Brandon's finally able to piece together a decent attacker in this spot. Update for y'all at home. Reagan Retzlov, 1-0. His match for top eight. Gen Pal Gamers. Rise up. Up against Cyrus with the Roaring Moon. The Dunsparce. Meanwhile, 
while Brandon has the Mirage Gate, and you're seeing a two energy on the Comfey. That's that's not anything wrong on your screen. I think we're going to see a Thornton play. <laughs> Maybe? No. Roxanne. Oh, there's there's spinning attack. Oh, there is spinning attack. <laughs> does take the knockout. <laughs> there's you, you do what you can do in these spots. <laughs> So spinning attack, being able to take the knockout. Roxanne is being played here to put Joshua down to two cards in hand, three for the turn, but got a Curlia on the bench. They got that Radiant Greninja if there's more energy available. Usually Gardevoir has been known to draw out of disruption supporters like this. Yep, previously we'd see Pat to the peak along with this Roxanne Imagine. really try to slow down the Gardevoir players. Instead now you're really just hoping to Catch them not drawing into those supporter cards or energies. No Giratina V for Brandon and just uses the spinning attack for the knockout. Going down to three prize cards himself. But now Joshua promotes that Gardevoir EX. Drew and Arvin for the turn. I think there was the Mimikyu in hand. So Refinement finds, I believe that's a Professor Turo's scenario. That's not really going to help here. But Gardevoir can still just load up some energies and take an attack. Yeah, this is a completely unchecked threat. The only situation that you have to think about is the Thornton. <laughs> it would have to be Thornton onto that Comfey and uh, surprise Giratina V-Star in order to take out this Pokemon, which would be unbelievable for Brandon to be able to take the prize lead in this spot after an, an awkward back and forth that has led us to three three prizes liam has now tied it up against fabricio one and one all right it's going to be a close game three for sure and while we're still here game one joshua going down to two prize cards brandon needs a lot of help okay and that starts with the concealed cards found some leaves Iron Leaves and Cramorant. Neither of those are going to have enough damage to be able to take a knockout on this Gardevoir EX. Mirage Gate found off the flower, selecting. It's just not that much going on, though, for Brandon in this hand, even with just plenty of cards. Looks like potentially high enough there's to play with the iron leaves but there's no, no energies. energies in the deck other than jet energy mirage gate is failing in this spot where's the super odd when you need them in the deck <laughs> there's one in the discard and importantly to note only playing a two super odd yep, certainly we've seen some sacrifices made in order to make this, this deck have some of those slots, like the Thornton, like the Iron Leaves, like the additional energies, potentially. Oh, there is a Giratina V in hand, but Brandon opting not to play it down. Oh, decides for it you have before to. playing that Roxanne. Yep, the bench is full. You're not taking a knockout this turn. The threats are what they are, unless you see the Turo. If you see that, probably already lost anyways. The Roxanne wasn't supposed to draw them into anything playable. And Jake up a game against Luke now. I don't know if it's looking too good for Charizard here. It is resilient. We'll see. We'll see. Gardevoir looking like the one that will stick around this time. But Brandon's going to try. There's not anything going on in this hand. Retreat possibilities, jet to the Comfey, sure. You can draw and look at two more cards with the flower selecting, but without Super Rod, there's no energies. There's not even a relevant attacker to really work on at this point. Oh, this is so rough because I think Brandon was still trying to go for the Iron Leaves play maybe, but flower selecting into the one grass energy that was left in the deck. So you can't use the Mirage Gate to get the full three energy. Ugh. Just settles for that spit innocently on the Gardevoir EX now. 170 damage. And 
Joshua has a pretty good hand here. Iono, Arvin, and then Buddy Buddy. But you got that refinement to be able to discard and draw a couple cards. Yeah, there's a debate. If, if you want to continue to build on this current hand, we see Collapse Stadium added in. That could be big. Along with the Heroes Cape. Longevity, prize denial, all the tools, none of the attackers. I can be your hero, Kyle. Wow, can you take the pain away? Yeah. I appreciate At least that. 100 HP of it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very <laughs> generous of you. They're deciding now what the right play is. You can just take the knockout, go down to one prize card, and hope to get another Gardevoir EX up next turn. You'll need to find an attacker or just a way to have boss's orders, but there is the knockout. No supporter being played for Joshua there. All right. I'm ready for some magic. It's got to be something pretty great at this point. Well, it needs to be a super rod. There's only one left in the deck, and we have not seen it for a while. Well, then let's see it. Honestly, it could be prize. Well, we found the V-Star. There's no psychic energy left for that Sableye. It's not prized. But there is a psychic in the prizes. Look for some help off of the Poke Gear. Oh, well, there's the Super Rod. Boss's orders. Are there stall possibilities? It's pretty difficult when you look at Gardevoir, but you could target down a Pokemon that isn't a psychic type. Well, you see Joshua going to count the energies now. Did I mm -hmm. make a mistake? Doesn't seem like it. There's nine psychics in the list for them. Obvious, obviously, still the Turo plays available. Oh, yeah, of there's, course. There's plenty. Where is oh, the Super no. Rod? It wasn't in the top two with concealed cards. This is rough for Brandon and his resources throughout this entire game. I think we're going to have to buy a turn or bosses order something like that. Radiant Greninja. Put up iron the leaves just because it could soak a hit. Not worth it passing the turn over now. Well, this means Joshua just needs a boss's orders to be able to win game one here. Finds it Ooh. off the refinement. Ooh. And just like that, Joshua up game one here in top eight. Gardevoir up against Lost Zone Giratina. And Super Raw was the last card. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, things were just not going to go Brandon's way that time around. A very difficult. And meanwhile, the complete opposite feeling for Joshua. Complete uh, excitement. That's uh, It's got to be a good feeling when it wasn't, it wasn't like Gardevoir was doing anything too impactful. Just continue to stick around, draw a couple cards, present little threats, but Fluttermane was a nightmare for Brandon. Yeah, I mean, imagine if someone picked it to do well for the tournament. It'd be crazy. That guy deserves to cast with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's take a look here at game one. It was a pretty good start on paper for Brandon, but that Fluttermane stopped it a little bit. That Prime Catcher was forced to be used pretty early. And then Joshua had the 90 damage from the Hex Hurl early, cleaned up the knockout with that Scream Tail. And then it was just back and forth with this Cramorant yet again. But that 20 extra damage was able to make this Hex Hurl put in a ton of work. And honestly, this Fluttermane, was the MVP of this game one. Yeah, damage just not lining up. Brandon with an opportunity to potentially uh, play down the Sableye, just could not find the cards. And he did have that opportunity. Maybe you clear up both those threats at the same time before the Jirachi's played. Joshua identifies that, plays down the Jirachi this time around and does just continue to take prize cards very simply. Present threat. If you can check it, great. If not, you give me an opportunity to find this boss. And... <laughs> just like that the one refinement available to them able to find that boss orders and clean up that game one but honestly it was just a struggle for brandon to really get a good rhythm of attacks going hoping for that sable eye super early unable to really find it in any point of the game until the very end when 
He didn't even have psychic energies left. Yeah. Well, Brandon is going to switch up strategies this time around. He's done bleeding. He's removed the Band-Aid. <laughs> and now we are playing some clean Pokemon. Maybe this is all it takes. Maybe letting his ring finger breathe a little bit this time around will lead to victory. And another update. Cyrus ended up taking game two against Reagan. Okay. So that means going into Dun. game three, the Duns and Dragons up against Chen Pao. So far, a lot of game threes out in the field. Yeah. We'll see if we have the same fate here at our feature table. Brandon, he wants to avoid that flutter main. He wants to have an opportunity going first, probably, to use those flower selectings and get aggressive. But there's, I mean, there's debate surely for the ability to, to go second in a matchup like this and use that Colrus experiment, get a ton of cards in the law zone and avoid your opponent using that Arvin. And there is also two very good starts for Joshua. That Fluttermane, of course, but also the Klefki. And here's another Mulligan. This is not what you want to have for the Lost Zone Giratina opponent. Anytime you give your opponent more cards to try to find that Colors experiment, it's not good news. You know what I want to do? Draw cards. Scoop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime my opponent has the slightest advantage going into game two, I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm out of here. But we got 75 minutes. We got time. 75 minutes, no more. Just under 48 minutes left to go in this match. But again, still plenty of time for both of our players to finish at least this one more game, potentially two games. And How many honestly, more mulligans until you scoop? Uh, six. Oh, OK. Good to know. Yeah. We'll keep an eye out for that. I mean, you play four Iono, so. That's true. We can, we can fix that. Yeah. It seems like they got a basic and they are about to be ready for game two of our top eight here in Orlando. Let's take a look at those prize cards. Super odd bosses orders. That's uh, not very good to be at the top. Those were important cards in the last <laughs> game. Those were very important cards. Those are ways to search Pokemon. Those are energies. Those are also important cards. Ooh. Okay. Uh, we can work with that. Can we mulligan these prize cards? No, no, both this, players just this, shuffle in and redo them. This is fine. And the debate is solved. Brandon wants to go first. Does not get the bad news. <laughs> yeah, no Klefki, no Fluttermane in the active for Joshua. Just a Ralts. So Brandon's going to have access to some flower selectings here. Maybe even a Jet Energy in the hand. You can do the full combo. Get wombo? Three. Combo Wombo. Wombo Combo. Sign me up. This is what we play the deck for is Comfe in the active spot, hanging out right over here. Then you find your friend with the jet, and he's going to come over and hang out. And then you get to retreat, run away. And we're going to get that one in there for three in the lost zone. If Brandon actually does that bottom left one, I'm going to be impressed. I really hope so. <laughs> Doesn't look like a jet energy in hand, but plenty of switching outs. There's that rescue board along with switch and switch cart. So we will see the full three flower selectings here so far. And Brandon finds some other good cards. Giratina V-Star is not going to be one of them. Psychic Energy taking over it. Yep. Typically, this is just a one Giratina V-Star game. And try to incorporate that into the knockout for the Gardevoir EX. So I think there was another Psychic Energy off the flower sure. selecting. Well, everybody got in there. You got an additional energy. Or when you want to retreat later on, I'd say that's a successful opening. Sasuian Heavy Ball is going to help Joshua not have to do some uh, prize checking when they search through their deck. Going to be able to just look at the six prize cards and see, yeah, uh, those are a lot of good cards in my prize cards. Well, I guess I'll write these down. <laughs> Sad face. Sad face. <laughs> I think the one time you wish you prized Fluttermane. Oh, yeah. 100%. Even Klefki had take. They're looking at it again, making sure, uh, yeah, there's no Pokemon. What if they changed? That's that's the real issue. <laughs> Make sure it's the same cards. It's like a quick change, uh, like illusion act. No, it was unfortunate because Joshua was hoping for a basic Pokemon because 
they have that te technical machine evolution in hand. Right. Uh, along with a nest ball, so you can go ahead and search out another waltz and then get two Curlia in play, but you would hope to not have to attack with the waltz. You also seen the buddy buddy pop in the nest ball. It's just more cards you don't have access to, which would have been beneficial into filling the board here, getting those Pokemon onto the bench and trying to evolve them as fast as you can. Earthen Vessel is going to discard the Collapse Stadium. That is one of the cards that could make or break uh, a board state as the game goes along, but it's not very good here on turn one. There you do see the Nest Ball. Maybe even Nest Ball for the Flutter Main or Klefki now. I think the debate is Flutter or Radiant Greninja in this spot. And the values shutting down your opponent as opposed to building up your own board. And I don't mind this at all. You can slow down your opponent and find opportunities for that tactical machine evolution later on. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, if you do attach and then retreat the Ralts to the Flutter Main, they will not have the energy available to technical machine, but might as well get it down on the Ralts now. It might not be useful later, and here is an Iono. Got to at least give yourself the option, especially if you draw into a Buddy Buddy Poffin. Could you imagine retreating in the spot? <laughs> and you could deal 10 damage. Value. Oh, you're right, yeah. Uh, that is Ooh. not that fun. A couple Ultra Balls going to have to discard it. This Some resources. This, this, yeah, this is once again just one of those hands that's great if you have enough fodder, but you, you don't. And uh, yes, there's some refinement available, but you're discarding valuable resources with every single refinement, hoping to find another stadium or another supporter, excuse me. Well, they opt to discard the second Ultra Ball and the Drifloon. Going to hope to find a Waltz and. I think Joshua, they just uh, took out a fly. Yeah, we're bleeding. We got <laughs> flies. We're, we're under attack all over the place here. It's just so many elements in the top eight. And then there is that teleportation burst, like you were saying. Ten damage going into the flutter main. And this is kind of where Joshua wants to be. Maybe not going second, but <laughs> we'll have to see. We, it, this is a workable position. Wow, Prime Catcher in hand yet again no for Brandon. Way. Prime Catcher Ultra Ball, too. So knockout lined up for the Ralts. Cramorant should be an easy Pokemon to spot. There's This turn is nowhere close to done. Jet energy found. There's Cramorant was in the yeah, hand. Cramorant's in the hand. Gets rid of the jet energy, values the water over it. Oh, hold up. Do we, do we have is a there? Greninja? Maybe? Yeah. <laughs> a double Force knockout experiment? here would go bonkers. Oh, and there's, there's the chorus. chorus. All right. This turn could be crazy from Brandon here. The water energy in hand changes so many things because then it's not double Mirage Gate, which yeah. is so typically the big issue going for the turn two Radiant Greninja. Now we see the resources available. Only one Comfey used so far. Colrus Experiment lined up with four in the in the loss zone. This is looking pretty realistic, Jeremy. Yeah, we're going to need at least one switch out from Brandon. He already has the Ultra Ball for the Radiant Greninja. There's plenty of energy in hand, too, to actually concealed cards. Just find even more. But we're going to start things off with the Colrus' Experiment. Again, already has the Mirage Gate in hand, too. This This is a great turn shaping up for Brandon against Joshua here. Hooking potential. Switch found Mirage Gate. I think that's all he needed. Ultra Ball was in hand. Radiant Greninja should be lined up ready to go. Switching effect. I think does it. Jeremy, you're on. Getting rid of the Mirage Gate and the Roxanne. You know something's bad when those are the two cards going to the loss zone. So. <laughs> I don't need late game resources because there's no late game. <laughs> Retreat for free. Thanks to that rescue board. Get that last flower selecting need. It gets rid of the jet energy. Finds another Colrus for next turn. Here we're going to Ultra Ball. Get rid of that Buddy Buddy Poffin. We don't need it. Get rid of an energy. Yeah, it seems like. Who cares? As yeah, long as it's not it. that water, we're good. The only thing that could have happened at this point was flower selecting into double water or something ridiculous. And 
They're looking just fine here now. Sees the water energy. That's the uh, that's the excited flutter of the fingers. I think we're going to be looking at a double <laughs> knockout. Mirage Gate gets that water energy and another basic on that Radiant Greninja. Energy from the hand with that water. And uh, mm, I don't know if there's going to be Ralts in play next turn for Joshua. <laughs> uh, definitely not this turn. <laughs> they're, they're, they're going away. It's uh, Fluttermane in a dream. And uh, I'll tell you what, the dream is over when you look at this hand of Curlius. And there is that switch the final piece of the puzzle to get this Moonlight Shuriken done on turn two through a Flutter Main in the active spot. Moonlight Shuriken taking the knockout on both Ralts. Wow. Huge turn here. Exactly what Brandon needed to see. And this hand is counter catcher double Curlia. How and about a hero's is, cape? Is a cape? You do need a hero right now. How about their cape? pass of the turn back. Brandon has the Colrus's experiment. Would love to find maybe another Mirage Gate just like off the top there. Looking through the list, there is no lost vacuum, so Fluttermane's gonna maybe stick around for one turn. Yep, even the pressure of the Cramorant in this spot is it's solid enough. I guess well, we're talking about abilities being shut down, so it's gotta be a different attacker, but it looks like the Giratina it's going to be there for that. Yeah, Shred, Shred works pretty well. Oh, just abyss seeking here. Saving the resources. Joshua doesn't have anything. Yeah, Brandon, I mean, Brandon's this, not this, this works out too. You, next turn, you just win if your opponent doesn't have the resources. Ooh. Eerie. Eerie looking at the hand. Going to be able to discard a Mirage Gate Super Rod, it seems like. Ooh. Nice, nice but that is... I mean, all right. Once, they, once all the options this time around. Yep, still, still makes a lot of sense. Just remove those. And this is the one way where Brandon not going aggressive last turn could come it's, back, it's, but it's over. <laughs> there's 11 in the loss zone. There's a there's a V star and a psychic energy. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I, I he can literally see his hand. <laughs> Star Requiem for the knockout. We're going to a game three. I mean, with all the game threes in top eight already, might as well do it. They're going to count the loss on. Yep, that's 11. Yeah, it, it, it jumped real quick uh, after the the, the, the additional uh, ab abyss seeking that we had there. Yeah. And uh, we just had to make confirmation. But yeah, that is uh, that is quite a game. You get to take a turn off in the middle just to charge up the, the Giratina V-Star. But MVP is going to be rating for Ninja this time around. Yeah, when your resources to get basic Pokemon is just Ultra Ball, it's going to tax a lot of your hand. Joshua not having access to Mana Feet to prevent that turn to Moonlight Shirk and definitely sealed the deal for Brandon in that game. And now game three to decide which one of our players is going to make top four. And speaking of top four, former world champion Liam Halliburton moving on two to one. Wow. Okay, we've got Charizard hanging out in the top four. And we're going to take a look at how we got here, at least in this game. It was all about that Radiant Greninja. An excellent play to spot that out with the water energy in hand. Had the resources. Got the double knockout on the Ralts fairly easily. And then game's in hand, buddy. Let's go to game three. Now, uh, both of our players are Looking to try to finish this game off. There is plenty of time. 35 oh, yeah. minutes to go. We're going to be all right. Oh, no. wow. Are you kidding? That's a flex and a half. Finds the flutter main. <laughs> Shares it with the world in the active spot. Let's see if the prizes have anything to say about that. I'd say Brandon got the worst end of that. It's not, it's not the greatest, but... I don't know. You got that Ralts, Gardevoir, yeah, and Springtail, yeah. along with that Eerie, which has been pretty good against these hands that Brandon has had. <laughs> oh, just reading the body language of the players is getting me excited here. This is Giratina V is a great way to counteract the uh, the Flutter main, but seeing that Pokemon in the active spot is terrifying every time. It just means your game is going to be infinitely slower. 
Joshua does have a nest ball for of Waltz here. We'll have to see if he is able to get in, or if they're able to get any more in play. Yep, can't complain about this opener. You can get those Pokemon down onto the bench, get yourself loaded up and to start to draw cards. That was what was really I mean, everything was missing in game two, but drawing cards usually leads to finding opportunities. I'll take a quick look through. They know their prize cards. They've been taking notes. Always good to be on top of it, especially with a deck that plays just a lot of one of attackers. One Drifloon, one Screamtail, one Fluttermane, one Mimikyu. Yep. You're following your, your bravery charm, your cape, your luxurious cape, all these different small resources that are just important to follow along with and make sure you've got the potential to take those knockouts in the mid to late game. I didn't get a quick look at their hands, so I'm not sure there's going to be much anything else going first. It's a little bit rough. You don't have access to Arvin, that technical machine evolution. But again, I think you can buy a little bit of time with this Flutter main in the active spot. Energy on the active and a pass of the turn. We're going to see what Brandon has to cobble together here. This looks like a typical just Giratina hand. Who needs come phase? when you're going to be forced to abyss seeking most of the time anyway. Right? Just give me a pile of energy, and Radiant Greninja, and Roxanne. Yay! <laughs> a great supporter on the opening turn, but there's certainly always potential when you see that Radiant Greninja. Conceal cards can draw into those Poke Gears, those Colrus experiments, and you can build your own Colrus. You can flood the law Zone and get to those important numbers for the Mirage Gate by turn three with two of these uh, uh, Abyss Seekings and Colors Experiments, but you just need them on this opening in a couple turns. Now, if we were talking about previous format before rotation, this star from Joshua would be amazing. <laughs> you got the Ralts, you got an energy on the active, you can retreat in Mirage Step. Yeah. There, there, were, there were very low expectations placed on Gardevoir <laughs> way back when. Oh, wow. That is cards. exactly what you want to see. Finds wow. the course experiment. Finds, Finds the, the prime, prime catcher, catcher yet again. There's also a Comfey in those five cards. Two Comfey. This is, I mean, this could easily be the exact same situation as last time. And there is consideration about that Comfey. You have to consider that because prime catcher into the Comfey, promote the Curlia slash Ralts, whatever it is. Then use the Colrus Experiment that you easily find off of the Poke Gear. Leads to seven cards in the Lost Zone, Mirage Gate. You find the Water Energy. Radiant Greninja could be wreaking havoc again. I think he's debating because there's no extra switch out in the hand to get that second flower selecting off. One is fine. We're good. Abyss Seeking will yeah, do. Yeah, I don't even think we're going to use it just yet. Abyss Seeking. Woo! Look at the top four. Mirage Gate, Boss's Orders, Water Energy. I mean, Mir Mirage Water is unreal here. But no, getting rid of the Mirage Gate. I guess there is a Mirage already in hand, yes. So you can hold on to an additional resource. I mean, this this hand, if the Poke Gear hits, is a switch away. Well, I mean, even with the Prime Catcher, you're, you're almost there too. It's, it's There's a lot going on was going to be a little bit of an awkward hand for Joshua, but they have just what they need. Arvin to be able to search for Buddy Buddy Poffin and that technical machine evolution. So even with just a single Ralts start, you can Buddy Buddy for two Ralts on the bench. Technical machine the evolution guy. to the active and get those Curlia in play this turn. Need the blue guy. Manaphy is so important here. I'm terrified in this spot once more. I think there's a nest ball in hand. All right. Gonna refinement first. Oh. oh. Already refinement, okay. Nest ball, Manaphy. There we go. Yep. 
That is the saving grace of this turn. Huge to find this. You can continue to place those energies. If they go to the discard pile, that's fine. You just bring them right back with the Gardevoir. That is in hand. And TM Evolution. And now three Curly are ready to roll. It's kind of like a Mirage step. We're going we're gonna to give it to it. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is definitely some quality Gardevoir gameplay that we're seeing. This is, this is working out very well. And this is an intimidating presence. And with two energy on the Flutter main and just one more, they'll be able to start taking knockouts on come phase. Or get the damage rolling on that Giratina V. Brandon finds a nest ball. Still has the pretty stellar hand. Yep. The plan changes. Water energy isn't great anymore. So throw that card away with concealed cards. And we're looking more along the lines of uh, shred into the flutter main or potentially using uh, a way to promote one of those curlias by either the boss's orders or the prime catcher. Take a knockout with that cramorant. The fewer the better. <laughs> those curlias drawing six cards a turn is unacceptable if you are trying to win a game three. Yeah, uh, uh, you not only draw cards, but you thin your hand and deck out of cards that you don't really want to see in the matchup or build up that discard with those Psychic Energies for Psychic Embrace. Nest Ball does find the Cramorant. We're going to thin out a little bit before this Poke Gear. Do we find Chloris' experiment? Oh. No. It's a risky take. It was a small opportunity to thin with the Ultra Ball first, but it's a resource you like to hold on to for when you do have to chase after that Giratina V-Star or find that important Pokemon after a Super Rod. Now, I know you were talking about taking a knockout on one of those Curlia to prevent the extra two-card draw from Joshua, but is there any avenue to take a knockout on the Manaphy and just prep for a Greninja? I mean, it, it certainly was a play way back when, when we saw players really targeting the use of the the Super Rod just because it wasn't, it was maybe a one of or a two of, and you wouldn't find it. But targeting the draw in this deck just seems like the right play. You'll be able to work around this. The Radiant Greninja play is, is cute, but ultimately you can open up that avenue later on with Sableye if you need to. It just depends on how Josh sets up the bench. Now they did draw a Hero's Cape for the turn. But we're going to see a couple of refinements. I guess the one bad thing in this position is all those cards in the hand, you don't really want to discard. There's some great resources in this hand. Third Super energy on rod. the Flutter Main. Save all of those resources. You can bring those right back. Still got a little more draw. Uh, I think... We're probably going to see an Iono here before that second refinement. Get rid of that big hand that Brandon has been sitting on. Which has boss's orders prime catcher in hand, which is <laughs> the easy ways to clear out this flutter main. Yep. On the other side of that coin, Brandon missed the course experiment, tried with the poke gear, failed, and now sees five fresh cards along with a top deck for the turn. So... This could be the avenue that Brandon needs in that fifth card is the Professor. Mimikyu gets discarded with that refinement. Luxurious Cape and Gardevoir EX found. Sweet and Heavy Ball is going to take a look. Grab a Ralts from the prize cards. Good card. It's pretty good, yeah. It's a lot better than the last time that we saw the Zui and Heavy Ball used. <laughs> get some great information along with that. I'm sure that Joshua already had figured out most of those cards, but just going to confirm one or two of those selections off on the board on the side. And you can't complain much about this turn. You get to put on some pressure. You're not taking prize cards, though. Leads to that counter catcher being a fantastic resource later on. No immediate threat of knockout here. And if, if you knew it or not, the boss's orders and the prime catcher on the bottom of the deck mean Curlius could be pretty safe. For sure. And honestly, the discard of the Gardevoir EX and Super Audit back to the deck, pretty important with the last one in the prize cards. 
not having to use it just yet, but it's always 90. great to have available. 90 on that Cramorant, 20 onto that Giratina V. And looking at that, ooh, we got another update. Jake with Ancient Box moving to top four. Uh -huh. ooh. And we got another update too, <laughs> Regan Retzloff with the 2-1 victory, Chien Pao. All right, we have a Chien Pao in at top four. Got an Ancient Box in top four, got a Charizard, and then the winner of our match here could either be Gardevoir or Lost Zone Giratina. Brandon trying everything at this point. The ball rolling thin the deck out. Use the buddy buddy for a comfy that can't do anything but you shuffled. Now there's opportunities to find some valuable resources. Polar's experiment is also hard to be used too, but oh, just gotta discard energy first. first. Those cards aren't going to be very beneficial here, but already has the Colossus Experiment in hand. Thornton, Boss's Orders, Giratina, V-Star. I didn't see a Mirage Gate there. Yeah, we saw one thrown in the Lost Zone early on. I'm talking about the Prime Catcher like it wasn't just played last turn. I see the reflection of that in the discard pile. <laughs> Switch in the hand that's going to, what, Abyss Seeking? That's, that's about it. And you walk into a bear trap. The damage lines up perfectly against the Cramorant, and you're just building your own Colrus, trying to find an opportunity to even to play the game. Switch and switch cart. Go to the Lost Zone. Nine in there. But Joshua has to be... Feeling pretty good in this position. Fluttermane, no damage, three energy. And we're going to refine in away that Radiant Greninja. We don't even need that extra draw power. Yo, this is the board state that we've been really eyeing up. You have a, a great attacker in the active spot, potentially three refinement Curlias drawing. No need to accelerate with that Gardevoir EX just yet because you're putting on a fair amount of pressure and everyone's protected by Manaphy. That is also another big difference between uh, Fluttermane and Klefki. <laughs> the Fluttermane does not shut off your mana ability. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't <laughs> love that. Arvin here, they're going to use it to search for Earthen Vessel, and it seems like that's just it. Maybe another tool, but... Yeah, you could grab the evolution just to throw away. Uh, sounds good to me. Oh. They're shortcutting a little bit here, but is going to grab that Earthen Vessel and that Tactical Machine Evolution. Search for those two Psychic Energies. Who, who even needs the Psychic Embrace? We can just start attaching energies for turn. Yeah, it's been working out just fine. All these energies hitting the discard pile now. Gardevoir will eventually work its way into the mix, but that's our first balloon sighting here on the stream. It's Drifloon time. <laughs> hey there, buddy. A little late to the party, but able to do some big damage Drifloon with that balloon blast. Is the party. I, I, I'd agree with that, actually. There's an avenue for knockouts here. Drifloon is lining things up. I think this is going to be a turn with the first sighting of that Gardevoir in game three. You can start to, to build on this Pokemon with the Bravery Charm. Bravery Charm with four energies. Allows Drifloon to deal 240 damage. That's going to be enough to take the knockout on this Giratina V. And Joshua goes down to four prize cards remaining in this game three. Going to have to get through Brandon's field now. That is activated with that flower selecting Fluttermane no longer in the active spot. All right. We need my namesake out there at this point. Spiritomb? Yes. No, <laughs> Sableye. Oh, that makes sense. Flower selecting. Now there is 10 in the loss zone. This is the one weakness of 
well, one of the a few of the weaknesses of Gardevoir. It's, it's taken on a, a different role now, but when you don't have the bench space for the Jirachi, a lot of damage counters are left in play when you're charging up these Pokemon, the Drift Loons, the Scream Tails, whatever it may be. When you can place those damage counters around, not only are you taking knockouts on the damage Pokemon, there's enough residual damage to remove some important Pokemon. Start to target cards like the Ralts, the Curlia, the Manaphy, whatever it may be, depending on what number was left in play. Brandon does have the Sableye, thanks to this Nest Ball. Goes ahead and gets it on the bench. I believe there's a Psychic in hand. And now you're staring down this field. There's 40 HP remaining on the Drifloon. You can take that out. Where do you place the remaining 80? Do you take the knockout on the Curlia? Do you take the knockout on the Manaphy to hopefully Moonlight Shuriken the next turn? I think I'm focused on that Curlia at this point. It's, the name of the game is simply uh, denying your opponent of those additional draws. Your opponent's at four prize cards remaining after they knock out the Sableye, which they need to, unless, of course, they bench the Jirachi and work around this Pokemon. You're going to be looking at an opportunity to rock sand, and if you rock sand when there's one or zero Curlia in play, then that's where Josh is going to be struggling. That's a very long name. I, I prefer the Pokemon TCG. That is oh, definitely the name of the game. <laughs> All right. Or instead of Sableye, you can do a wild Thornton transition into Kiratina V-Star. What is going on here? <laughs> that, I mean, you wanted this Pokemon in play. You did that. You're able to do that with Thornton. And next turn, you have the ability to use the Roxanne while this Pokemon could potentially be targeting down some relevant Pokemon. But Brandon wow. still has an attachment for turn as well. You see that psychic energy in hand, but no. Oh, I thought he, he was about to retreat to the Giratina. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy. Math, psychic Math energy. is lining up too great over here. And Lost Mine taking the knockout on that Drifloon in the active spot. Does he go for the Curlia? He does. Two prize cards now for Brandon. Three left, and such a big swing in this game three. Whew. Got to take a look at the resources. I haven't kept track of the counter catcher for Brandon, but that is what you have to be thinking of in situations like this. If Joshua potentially was targeting down the double knockout here with the Flutter Main and the Kramer Ranch, that would be two prize cards remaining. And Brandon might be able to smell blood in the water. Rock sand, counter catcher, knockout, Gardevoir. So what does Joshua do to play around this? Well, they have a super rod. Try to get back some resources. Remember, the way this Gardevoir deck is built, it's just a lot of one of attackers. Well, if you can keep the damage in play, you already have that Cramorant as an easy target later on. Flutter main likely not going to be targeted and you have your own counter catcher ready to roll is, is there a way to knock out the guillotine of v-star this time that, that's what i was thinking is there a possibility of something like that luxurious cape in hand along with a scream tail to be able to get enough energy and damage counters on to take a knockout on that guillotine of v on the bench super rod for balloon pals and I think we're, we're, we're talking about the capes in this situation. Are the resources all there? I mean, is the Screamtail still on the prize cards? Well, just go balloon counter catcher. Who cares? Yeah, true. Screamtail still is in the prize cards. See the cape hanging out in the hand. Not the hero's cape, but the luxurious one. Buddy Buddy Poffin after the Super Rod here. Can go ahead and fetch that Drift Loom. Can account the energies available. They have five in the discard. You can retreat, so that's six. Six times three. That's numbers. <laughs> well done, Jerry. <laughs> Jirachi for some additional protection. Sableye now useless against the bench. Kirfloon, the likely attacker in this situation. We're getting 
and down to the wire here. Oh yeah, this is definitely the end game for both of these players. I think we're gonna have maybe two turns each for them to really decide this game. It's such a big spot to combine the Jirachi alongside of the Drifloon. The additional damage placed on the Drifloon in combination against that Sableye. You can see prize cards flying all over the place. They Arvin for what looks like Hero's Cape and Ultra Ball. Hero's Cape's gonna be a little bit easier uh, to play with instead of that Luxurious Cape. Remember, Luxurious Cape gives an extra prize card to your opponent if the Pokemon's knocked out by damage. No such restriction on Hero's Cape. Yep. Can't have it all. Can't be rich and a hero like Batman. It's you gotta pick one. Yeah, it's already taken. Yeah. <laughs> now, there is the retreat. Is there any merit in going back in with the Ultra Ball? Get those out of the hand, get out of the deck for a potential Roxanne? Yeah, I certainly don't mind that. You know that this is the only uh, win condition that your opponent has is to just continue to disrupt unless you feel that the Ultra Ball is gonna be a card that potentially benefits in this spot. Maybe the only way that you lose a game like this is a Gardevoir being knocked out. Five energy, that means 100 damage counters on that Drift Loon, 100 times three, that's 300 damage, taking the knockout. Joshua goes down to two prize cards remaining to Brandon's three. Sableye is not gonna be useful with that Jirachi on the bench for Joshua. And Brandon's going to have to lean on this Roxanne. Yep. And disruption is going to be helpful. There is no miracle card left in the deck in order to combat this hero's cape. We're not looking for that lost vacuum. It's not featured. But Countercatcher was found. Yeah, if only Brandon had Thornton and uh, a Giratina V with a Mirage Gate. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> There we see Countercatcher bring up Curlia. Could be in knockout four, Cramorant. Now the one thing that Brandon has to be careful for is the fact that Fluttermane can still take care of that Cramorant if it's on the bench, and then if something's in the active with 90 or less HP, that's Joshua's last two prizes. Yeah, attacking with the Cramorant in the spot seems pretty ideal, and then playing the Giratina V this turn. It has to be the number one thing on Brandon's mind is to play the prize exchange and understand that your opponent is more focused around counter catchers than boss's orders. Two two prize cards would be at at that point and sure, Cramorant's easily knocked out by a plethora of Pokemon, but it's not gonna be the recipient of a double knockout. An awkward hand of six for Brandon off this Roxanne couple water energies and a few supporters. Where's the worm? Not there. Oh. There's an energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. We need the worm. It's in the dirt. All right. Let's go digging. Flower selecting. There is an ultra there ball hand, I believe. Very nice. Yeah, you can see the resource battle here. Oh, no. We're going Sableye. That's... Taking the knockout on the Curlia does... What? Joshua have enough resources in the psychic energies. Oh, oh, not taking oh, not the knockout. Knock Just gonna play around the uh, the embrace. Not. The I, I was there. about to okay, say because yeah. that would have been very scary. All right, the counts of the energies is very important. Finding psychic energies. Or even just, well, finding the evolution is the biggest spot here. If you find the other card of war, but it's in the, is it in the prize card still? I, I believe they just took it. Uh, so it's in the deck now from the Roxanne. Wow, then not playing all those Ultra Balls kind of works. And those are resources that could help later on. That's a pass of the turn. Brandon finding a huge line here. Energy, discard, concealed cards. There's a boss's orders in hand for Brandon. Finds Jet Energy Psychic. Jet Energy brings up that Comfey. Flower selecting. Mirage Gate and Super Rod, it seemed like. Boss's orders, Boss's orders Jirachi. Up the Jirachi. 
and now with all single prize Pokemon in play, feels comfortable removing the Jirachi, has the Sableye for cleanup on the Curlia and the Drifloon, and is just hoping for a little bit of time. Now, I'm not sure how many energies are left in the discard for Joshua, but they bring up Fluttermane. Two cards in hand. Oh my gosh. Flat Stadium. Buddy, buddy, Poffin, is there a Pokemon that could be found? And a refinement draw. first. Discards the buddy buddy. It's the Ultra, Ultra Ball Ball boss's orders. The, boss. Does the hand is, is there. Thin? Is there enough cards in hand? You need to be able to Ultra Ball for a Pokemon. Collapse Stadium away the Drifloon. Oh no! You have the Pokemon in hand. It's the a Ralts. Pokemon in hand. You can throw away the Ral the the Drifloon to get the energies back into the discard pile. You have those available. You use the boss's orders to target down another Pokemon. Double knockout lined up on the Comfey and the Cramorant. It's all there. Joshua just wants to make sure that he's found there it. There we go. Collapse Stadium. They found it. Boss's orders, and just like that, Joshua Freak moving up to top four with Fluttermane. What a game from both of our competitors. Look at their face. They are ecstatic. Moving into top four. Gardevoir is still alive. That is such an unlikely find, <laughs> but it all 